Hi folks, welcome to the arena coming to you from our Lagos studio in Nigeria. I'm Samson Oluide. On today's episode, we'll discuss the sport of cricket, the Nigerian cricket national team's bilateral series win over Sierra Leone and the state of Nigerian cricket as a whole. Let's go on a break. When we return, we'll begin with Sean Ajidagba who breaks down the nuances of cricket. <laughs> 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 oh boy, winning you was so easy. I just couldn't stand those your powerful shots. That's what happened. <laughs> really? <laughs> Let's go to my place for dinner. Mm. Mm. This fufu is so nice. It's true unripe plantain flour. True unripe plantain flour is delicious. Yes, true unripe plantain flour is what I serve my husband for swallows. It's easy to prepare. Fortified with vitamin A, low in sugar and cholesterol, rich in fiber that helps the heart, builds and strengthens the bone, and his energy level <laughs> is boosted. True unripe plantain flour, no additives, 100% natural, a product of Pali Agro Products Nigeria. Through unripe plantain floor, available in all leading stores nationwide. I've always said that for me also who have a strong passion for cricket, um, the best form of learning is the audiovisual form of learning, where you see it and then you can hear it. But most times we teach in abstract. The best way to learn the game of cricket is to come to the cricket ground. But let me just quickly give you a, a quick example because I know football is the most popular sport in Nigeria. For football, you have 11 players on one side and you have 11 players on the other side, which is Team A and Team B. The same way you have for cricket, Team A and Team B. 11 players on one side, 11 players on the other side. In football, you have what we call first half and second half. But for cricket, we have what we call first innings and second innings. Your football, you have a captain, the same way cricket has a captain. Football has arbiters of the game, the one you call umpires. The same way cricket also has their own um, arbiters. We, are call, we call us umpires, football calls their own referee. So the best way to understand the game of cricket is, while football is played on a pitch, cricket is played on an oval. And when you want to recognize an oval, you talk about you are frying egg inside a frying pan. That's how an oval looks like. Now, for a game of cricket to start, um, you have the umpires come around and tell the two captains to submit their team list. Just like a football team will also submit their team list. And the umpires, we have two types of umpires, the main umpire and the square leg umpire. But they work interchangeably, which means that while you are a main umpire, at some point in time you become a square leg umpire. Unlike football, where if you are an assistant referee, you are an assistant referee all the way. If you are a center referee, you are center referee all the way. But for cricket, we work interchangeably. Now, football has adopted the uh, video assistant referee. Cricket has had that long before now. We call it the third umpire. But if you don't call it third umpire, you call it the hawk eye. The hawk eye is that thing that sees more than the two umpires on the field of play. So before a game starts, you see the umpire say, submit your team list. Once they read the team list, they call them in for tossing of the coin. And when you toss the coin, it's for you to tell the umpire whether you want to bat or you want to field. But you do that based on your strength. So it's just like football also, when you win the toss, it's either you pick a side or you pass. So in all of these things, it's a bit complex, but well explicit such that if Team A bats first and scores maybe, for instance, 150, the job of Team B is to ensure that they surpass that 150 for them to be determined a winner. Then you can also say, you Team A that scored 150, you want to ensure that your opponent does not get up to that amount. Like, for instance, now, Nigeria is playing Syria alone in a bilateral series. Nigeria batted first and scored 134 runs. So for Sierra Leone to beat Nigeria, they need to score 135 runs. But what Nigeria is trying to do is to ensure that they don't score up to that. Now you will see um, some people in yellow, uh, 11 of them, that is the fielding side. But the two people that you see in blue, that is the people we call the batting side. Now the batting side, 
we have what we call the striker and the non-striker. Anybody you see facing the bowler is the striker. The person who is not facing the bowler is the non-striker. And they have three things behind them. One is called a stump. But when the three are together with a bales, it's called a wicket. So the job of a goalkeeper is to protect the ball from going into the net. That's the same way a batter will protect his wicket. The ball should not get there. So it's a bit complex, but like I said, audiovisual form of learning is the best form of learning where you are seeing it and then you can also hear it. Okay, so um, it's just like football. We have um, 11 aside, which is a standard game. We have five aside, we have three aside. Now for cricket, we have the test playing country. And how do you distinguish a test playing country? A test playing countries are those countries that are well established with the body that controls cricket in the world, International Cricket Council. And they usually use a red ball and they put on a white attire. But what will make you distinguish it is that their game usually spans a longer time than a, an ODI. An ODI is an acronym for One Day International, which means it starts that day and it ends that day. But the shortest format of cricket and the most enjoyable is the T20, which is the one that Nigeria is currently playing now. The first innings is usually 1 hour 30 minutes and the second innings is usually 1 hour 30 minutes. But that is the allotted time. But there is nothing cast in stone to say because it is 1 hour 30 minutes first innings, 1 hour 30 minutes second innings, it must end at that time. It's just like a sport like boxing. You say you have 12 rounds, but you can see a boxer knocked out in the first round and that game is all over. So, you know, the shortest format is the T20 and that's what Nigeria is currently playing now and it's the most enjoyable. So these are some of the challenges because it's very, very expensive. Let me come to the issue of equipment. Um, sometimes you want to think that cricket is an elitist sport. Elitist in the sense that, yes, we have children of um, not very rich homes playing the game of cricket, but the cricket equipment are very expensive. Sometimes you can see some cricket bats, just a bat alone, not even the kid bag. A bat alone could go as high as $500, $1,000. So it's as expensive as that. So if you want to use a very good cricket bat, such that when you just apply your shot on the ball, he goes for a boundary, you need to get nothing less than a cricket bat that costs $500 upwards so it's very very expensive so if you are from a home that they are not so financially buoyant and you are talking about just your cricket bat which is just a subset of what you need as a cricketer then you want to ask yourself that what would you now need if you are looking for a batting pad you are looking for an elbow guard you are looking for a tie pad you are looking for a chest pad you are looking for an helmet you are looking for a batting pad you know so it's very very expensive to fund cricket we were also able to track past and present officials of the Nigerian Cricket Federation and they had this to say regards the state of the sports in the nation. I think to a large extent it's a good warm-up game. Prior to the T20 in Rwanda, I think, and uh, it was good preparation because this condition is not what you're used to. We used to play on concrete and now that we have a facility like this, they need to play more often on it to keep them to get them in tune with the bounce, the movement of the ball and all that. Okay, this is just a bilateral series between Nigeria and uh, Sierra Leone in preparation for the ICC Men's T20 Africa World Cup qualifiers. Um, the two nations are going for qualifiers. Um, Sierra Leone is going next week to Rwanda to play in Group A, why Nigeria will go to play in the main finals. So what Sierra Leone has done is to come to Nigeria that is ranked above them for them to be um, to be dragged so that they, they, they are well prepared for them to go for their Group A qualifiers. If they emerge tops in the Group A, they will not meet Nigeria in the finals of uh, the competition where Ghana and Nigeria, sorry, we are Kenya and Nigeria already um, said to play in that competition. Uh, Uganda, uh, Uganda has already qualified from another group. Um, so it's going to be Uganda, 
then uh, Rwanda, sorry, Sierra Leone will not go and play in their Group B competition. If they, if they qualify from the Group B, they will join Uganda to meet Nigeria and Kenya in the finals of the World Cup qualifiers. Like I said, this is more like a friendly game. Okay. But a, a ranking friendly game. It's just like in football also, where you play friendly matches, uh, money is usually not involved. Or like when you are playing the AFCON, you are playing the World Cup, where there's too much money. But let me just, from the business perspective, that money has been expended on this because they flew the Sri Alonians from their country down here. They came in last week, Monday, and they have been accommodated by the Nigerian Care Federation. They've been fed by Nigerian Care Federation. You know, they've given them all the support, security and all that. So money has been committed. I tell you what, every game, the player of the match used to get a plaque and hundred dollars, courtesy of Edo State Cricket Association. So everybody that have won the player of the match, they've been getting hundred dollars. So money at some point in time have been committed, you know, for food and some other things. So that's why I'm saying that for this, there is no money like that, like that. But there's money that was invested in organizing this kind of. All the umpires that came, they're going to pay them in foreign currency. The match commissioner, they're going to pay them in foreign currency. So that's why I'm saying that money has been in invested. But for the venture winner, there is no money, but there are trophies and their uh, individual prize honors. I must tell you, it's really commendable. I remember that in 1994, when we went for World Cup, as you said, World Cup in Kenya, we resolved at that meeting. I remember we had a breakfast and we resolved that we were going to break all the concrete pitches in Nigeria to have tough. Can you imagine? It's just to how many years from now, 1994, we're looking at about 27 years after. But we thank God, it's better late than never. Now that we have it, it will help us a great deal. Because what used to happen was, when we go for those international meets or competition, we are just coming up when the competition is finishing because we don't have, we're just getting in tune with the facilities. But now that we have this here, it will help us a great deal in doing well. Playing on the tough wickets. If we, you look behind me, you'll see that they are playing on tough wickets. Previously, they used to play on concrete. And uh, when you play on concrete within your country, you think you're doing well because the ball bounces and comes up. So you hit balls around, but by the time you go for international competitions, they expose you to the tough wicket because this is what is obtainable in, uh, in, in countries that play the game very well. So they, nobody plays on concrete now. So now the first challenge we had was to see how we move from concrete to tough wicket, which we have done. This is the first comp international competition that is taking place in uh, Unilag tough wicket. And uh, another one is taking, um, TBS is on, and by, no by December it's going to be used. We're going to open that. There are also two tough wickets being constructed in, in the National Stadium of Abuja. There's one in uh, Edo. There's one going on in Kaduna. So by the time we have finished the facilities, then that is that we have we have overcome that challenge of facility on playing uh, surface. What call, the World Cup of Rice is taking place middle of uh, November. So Nigeria will be leaving. Our team will be leaving on the sixth of November. Um, have early arrival and acclimatization in Rwanda for the men's championship, which starts fifteenth uh, of November. <laughs> oh boy, winning you was so easy. I just couldn't stand those your powerful shots. That's what happened. <laughs> really? <laughs> Let's go to my place for dinner. Mm. Mm. This fufu is so nice. It's true unripe plantain flour. True unripe plantain flour is delicious. Yes, true unripe plantain flour is what I serve my husband for swallows. It's easy to prepare. Fortified with vitamin A, low in sugar and cholesterol, rich in fiber that helps the heart, builds and strengthens the bone, and is energy level. <laughs> it's 
boosted through unripe plantain floor no additives 100 natural a product of pali agro products nigeria through unripe plantain floor available in all leading stores nationwide the challenges to me it's been facilities but now that this is being resolved the other capacities like coaching administration will have to step up to make us compete favorably internationally and make us more visible in the world of cricket. The quality of our players will improve and that is why we are also exposing them to the international games. This is one of the international games. By next year we are going to see how we get more teams to play in the competition so that our players will overcome the challenges of when they go outside and they see uh, some quality players, but now if they are now playing with them here in Nigeria and outside, they are very free and uh, they see them as pals. So I think these are these are the just these are the few ones I I will talk about. Not minding that yes, finance cannot be enough. We continue to solicit this for sponsors to help us. Continue to see how states can get into this game and um, and be part of it because. Most of these players who are playing in this competition are from different states. So we want this game to be a national game. It's not restricted to a particular state. It's not restricted to a particular region. Cricket is a, is a global sport. And for you to check, you can, you can check it online. Cricket is, a, is the second most popular sport in the world. So Nigeria is not left out and we are trying to key into that uh, wave. Like this place we are currently standing on, which is the Unila Cricket Oval, um, it has been there for a while. This oval was constructed in 1966 because the University of Lagos was founded in 1962. So it was constructed in 1966, but they've used it for several games, um, secondary school competitions, international competition. but at some point in time it was abandoned. But just last year, the Unila Cricket alumni all came together and said, Let's do something in honor of our former coach and mentor who ensured that this ground was constructed back in 1966. The person we are talking about is uh, Professor Adebola Kukoi, who in 1966 was then a graduate assistant, but rose to become a professor, a professor of um, uh, comparative literature. So he ensured that they constructed this ground. And the Unilag Cricket alumni, pull funds together to set up this ground. As I speak to you, this is the best cricket over in the whole of Nigeria. Because the person who supervised the construction of this over, who still manages this over, a friend and a colleague, Yemi Amusa, said, we have six different playing surfaces here in Yinla Cricket Over. So you could use one, you could use the other one. So it's very interesting to know that Close to 50, 60 million was expended on this ground to make it what it is. And job is still not concluded yet. So what we want to see is to see that at different federations, at different states of the federation, I beg your pardon, we have tough wickets. Because gone are those days where Nigeria used to play on a concrete surface and then get to international competition and go and face a tough wicket. So it's as if you are a footballer, you are playing on grass and then you get to international uh, matches and then you are playing on Astro Tough, which is a different surface entirely. So I like the fact that we are building several tough wickets across the various states. And in the words of the president, Mr. Uya uh, before the expiration of their tenure, they would ensure that every nook and cranny of the federation, you would find tough wickets. So the players will be used to tough wickets. I've said it before, we need to go back to the cradle. There has to be an under 15 academy. There has to be an academy school for cricket so that the young boys who are playing now are well tutored and skills are ingrained so that they come better and we can 
improve our under eight teams. Take it to the schools. Take it to the schools. I, I made a suggestion then, but apparently the suggestion did not work. Was like there are several secondary schools that play the game of cricket that should have been invited over to come and see Nigerian internationals play. They only hear them. They can be inspired. They can be motivated by seeing the likes of Isaac Okwe, seeing the likes of Sylvester Okwe, seeing the likes of Joshua Yonike, the captain, uh, Ash Smith, um, Daniel Jim, and uh, the, uh, Rashid Abolaris. But if they had been invited, we would have seen a large crowd come here. Well, maybe not like a football game, but I think gradually we can improve it. When they come, not only just coming to come and watch the game, ensure that little things are provided for them from refreshment to souvenirs and all that, that will arouse their interest to come because it's like if you are buying people over to come and see what you are doing. If you have money, we see serious investment. Nigeria will be where you want them to be. I'm sure each time I mention countries like South Africa, countries like Pakistan, India, West Indies, Afghanistan and all of that, you want to say, where will Nigeria start playing with these elite countries? Uh, the Cricket World Cup is currently going on, United Arab Emirates and Oman. Nigeria cannot be there because we have not even gotten to that status. But as far back as 2013, Afghanistan, who are playing at the Cricket World Cup now, T20, used to play in the same level with Nigeria. But it's unfortunate that they invested heavily in their sport and that's why they are reaping the dividend. So for us, we need to invest heavily for us to be at that enviable height. We can't continue to say um, we play little matches and then we want to get to that apogee of our career. No, we need to constantly play and invest heavily. Yeah, the next, in the next five years, we, we are looking at um, having more international games in Nigeria. Countries are already writing to us that they want to join in the series. That means by next year, we cannot only be playing with Sail alone other countries will join and uh, at the female level we are also having um, plans of um, organizing some competitions that will involve women a lot because ICC guideline is that you have to make it 50 50 50 50 50 percent for men 50 percent for female so as you are growing the male game you grow the female game so that is how, how we want to move to the next level. And uh, all the regions now, there's a very big effort for every region to take part in what they are doing. There are so many leagues, just like we talked about. There's a CCC league in Lagos. Um, South, there's a league they play in Ibadan. There's a league they play in um, Southeast. Uh, there's a league they play in, in the North Central. So there are different leagues that go on in the country. But we want to see how we promote their, those leagues and uh, partner them to make sure that what they do is also to the advantage of the game and they are in line with what is going on globally. And that's how much we can take on today's edition of the show. We wish our Nigerian cricket national team the very best in their World Cup qualifier against Rwanda, talking about the ICC Men's T20 World Cup qualifier, which would take place from the 15th of November. I'm Samson Oledi. It's been the arena. Thank you for watching. Do stay blessed.